Uniform Acceleration. In this lesson, we'll be talking about aircraft carrier catapult systems, acceleration overview, speeding up and slowing down, uniform versus non-uniform acceleration, average acceleration, graphing constant acceleration, so that's going to be PT, VT, and AT graphs, the big five acceleration equations, and then we'll have lots of practice problems. Steam power catapult system on aircraft carriers. Now, it may not seem very impressive to, to say that an airplane can take off from an aircraft carrier, but just for simplicity's sake, let's just say that an aircraft needs this much runway in order to take off because it needs to gain that much speed and over that much time in order to get off the ground. The thing is, aircraft carriers aren't that big, right? Aircraft carriers might be this big. So how do we get the same velocity, so same vo final velocity, in those two different situations? Well, we need some kind of catapult system to really force that plane forward and at the same time, stop it when it lands. So what do we do? Well, we need to set up these bungees on the back of the aircraft carrier. So these bungees are kind of like a slingshot. They go from here to here. And we're going to put the plane right there. When these bungees let go, they're going to force that plane forward really, really, really fast. So we're going to get a huge acceleration. So our acceleration is going to be much bigger than our typical acceleration that a plane would experience as it's going on its own power along a runway before it can take off. Now, the final velocities are the same. The initial velocities are, of course, the same, right? Both initial velocities are zero. But since we have such a smaller distance, we need to have a much bigger acceleration to make that final velocity happen. And here's some very impressive numbers. So aircraft carrier jets display some of the greatest accelerations you will see. On takeoff, they can go from zero kilometers an hour to 265 kilometers an hour in only two seconds. And then landing, you're going to have a very similar result. You're going to go from 240 kilometers an hour to zero in 100 meters. And typically, the runways are much longer than this. But we're going to use the same system. We're going to grab... In this case, it's a bungee that stops them in order to slow them down. But it's acceleration at the same time. It's accelerating in the opposite direction at a really rapid rate. Acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Velocity is a vector quantity, and therefore, acceleration is also a vector quantity. Average acceleration, A, A, V, is the change in velocity divided by the time interval for that change. So our acceleration is going to be change in velocity over change in time. And the change in velocity is going to be velocity final minus velocity initial. And then this delta here represents change. So where VF is the final velocity, VI is the initial velocity, and delta T is the time interval. Instantaneous acceleration is the acceleration any particular instant, but is often referred to simply as acceleration. Acceleration units. So what units do we end up for with acceleration? Well, you have change in velocity on top, and now change in velocity is meters per second. On the bottom, you have change in time, and that's in seconds. So what you end up with is meters per second squared. And what does that mean? Well, it means that how fast are we changing in terms of meters per second, every second. So let's just say our acceleration was two meters per second squared. That means that our velocity changes, in this case, let's say that it increases. So our velocity increases by two meters per second, every second. So let's just say it's accelerating for two seconds. So the final velocity would be four meters per second because after the first second, it's going to be two meters per second, and after the second second, it's going to be four meters per second. So that's acceleration. It's a change in velocity over time. Speeding up or slowing down. Since acceleration is a change in velocity, you can have acceleration as an object speeds up, this is positive acceleration, and when it slows down, and this is negative acceleration. Both display a change in velocity. Both of them are going to represent VF minus VI over T. Now let's just say that our final velocity is less than our initial velocity. So let's just say it's two minus four. And let's just say over two. So you're gonna get minus two divided by two, which is gonna be negative one meters per second squared. Now, if our final velocity was four and our initial velocity was two, as in we're speeding up, and again, we used over two seconds, now we're gonna get an acceleration of one meters per second squared, positive one meters per second squared. So this is gonna be our positive acceleration, our speeding up, so that's our positive, and this is going to be our slowing down and our negative acceleration. So what do you think the slope of the VT graph below is going to tell us? So this is our VT graph. So what do you think that it shows us? We have velocity on the Y and we have time on the X. So I want you to pause the video, have a look at the graph, and try to think what this VT graph is showing us. So what does the slope of the VT graph tell you? Well, it's very similar to how the slope of the DT graph tells us the value of the velocity. The slope of the VT graph tells us the acceleration. Now we could find the slope of this VT graph right here. Let's pick two points. Let's just go here and here. So slope is gonna to equal to rise over run. The rise in this case is four. The run is going to be one. So our slope is four. And then if you take a look at the AT graph, you can see that we have four. And then let's pick the second point. 
second point going between here and here, our m value, our rise, is going to be 8 minus 4 over 1, because it's 2 minus 1, which is going to give us 4 again. So we're going to get 4 here. And we're going to get a constant number, because this is a constant slope. So what we can conclude is that the slope of the VT graph is the acceleration in the AT graph. Uniform versus non-uniform acceleration. Uniform acceleration is motion that occurs when an object traveling in a straight line changes its speed uniformly with time. That's what we saw here. This is uniform acceleration on the left here. Non-uniform acceleration is motion that doesn't travel in a straight line and or doesn't change its speed uniformly. So this could be an object changing its speed faster or slower. This example we have at the bottom here, this is a VT graph. And what it's showing is that we're getting a change of velocity between 0 and 1 that's actually greater than the change in velocity between 1 and 2. So we say change in V between 1 and 2 is bigger than the change in V between 2 and 3. Now it's still gaining velocity. You can see the number of velocity is going up. So we are still accelerating. We're just accelerating less. So we would say the acceleration between 1 and 2 is bigger than the acceleration between 2 and 3. So this is non-uniform acceleration. Check your understanding. Using your knowledge of acceleration and the terms we've discussed, so uniform motion, uniform acceleration, and increasing or decreasing velocity, describe the motion of these three graphs, A, B, and C. So pause the video and write down your answer to A, B, and C with as much information as you can possibly find. Check your understanding answers. So let's take a look at what the answers are. So in A, our object accelerates away from the origin. The origin is zero for a short time. Then it continues to move at a constant speed in the same direction. So we see in this section right here, that's going to be our acceleration. Acceleration here is zero because we have constant velocity. So since our velocity is constant, we have zero acceleration. In this case, the velocity is four. And that's between time one and time four. So since we have a constant velocity of four, our acceleration needs to be zero because we have zero change in velocity. Now B, the object is moving at a constant speed away from the origin for a short time, then begins to accelerate towards the origin, so negative acceleration, as in it's slowing down until it stops. So it's going to have a constant velocity between times zero and one. So constant velocity has three. So this could be three meters per second. So between times zero and one, its velocity is three meters per second. So it's moving away from the origin. So think about if you're moving three meters per second, every second you're going to be three meters further away. So for the first second, it's going three meters per second, and that's constant. And then you can see it starts to decrease. So our velocity at time two is two meters per second. At time three, it's one meters per second. So our velocity is going down. So our velocity is bigger here than it is here. So that means we're getting an acceleration. It's a negative acceleration because our final velocity is less than our initial velocity. So what could be causing this? Well, it could be braking. So think about a car moving three meters per second, and then they slowly take the foot off the gas and apply the brake slowly. Well, that's going to cause the velocity to go down. And C, our object that's accelerating away from the origin for a short time and then decreases acceleration. So you can see between time zero and one, we get a pretty big velocity change. It's actually two. So the change in velocity is two between time zero and time one. But between time one and time two, we only get a change in velocity of one. So our velocity, although has changed, and our velocity is still increasing, you can see our velocity at time three is four meters per second. So the velocity is going up, but it's not going up as much. So we would say that the acceleration between time zero and one is bigger than the acceleration between times one and two, although it is still accelerating in a positive direction. Check your understanding. A car starting from rest and undergoing uniform acceleration reaches a velocity of 21 meters per second north in 8.4 seconds. Find the average acceleration. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to say that north is positive, and then we're going to plug our numbers into our formula. So we're looking for average acceleration. So A is going to equal to final velocity. So it starts from rest. So let's just say VI is zero, uniform acceleration, and VF is 21 meters per second. Time is 8.4 seconds. So let's plug our numbers in. A equals VF, 21, minus zero, over 8.4. And that equals to 2.5 meters per second squared. We have two sigigs in our answer. We have two sigigs in our question, so that part's good. And we're almost done. So we can say that positive was north, and we know that we have a positive acceleration. So our acceleration, final answer, becomes 2.5 meters per second squared north. Check your understanding. 
A cyclist traveling initially at 14 meters per second south, so say VI equals 14 meters per second south, so let's just say south is positive, brakes smoothly and stops in four seconds. Time equals 4.0 seconds. What's the cyclist's average acceleration? We know that it stopped, so the VF is zero, and we're looking for acceleration. Acceleration equals VF minus VI over T. VF is zero, VI is 14, and our time is 4.0. So that gives us an acceleration of negative 3.5 meters per second squared. Now we said south was positive. Since we have a negative number, our final answer becomes 3.5 meters per second squared north. Rearrange the acceleration equation below to solve for T. A equals VF minus VI over T. We need to solve for T. Now, there's a couple ways of doing this. I'm going to do it the long way first, but there is a faster way. You know that if you have a number on the top on one side of an equal sign and the bottom on the other, you can actually just swap them back and forth. So you could have T equals VF minus VI over A. But what we're going to do is just go the long way and show you how we would get to that point. So we're going to multiply both sides by T. And that gets rid of the T on the right-hand side. So you're left with A, T equals VF minus VI. You need to get T by itself. So we're going to divide each side by T, excuse me, by A. That gets rid of the A on the left. And you're left with T equals VF minus VI over A. Rearrange the acceleration equation. Now we're going to solve for VF. So again, we're going to rewrite our equation. A equals VF minus VI over T. We're looking to find VF by itself. So first things first, we're going to multiply each side by T. That gets rid of T on the right-hand side. And we're left with A, T equals VF minus VI. We're going to add VI to both sides of the equation. Negative VI plus VI is going to cancel out VI on the right-hand side. I'm going to be left with AT plus VI equals VF. And we're done. Now, lastly, we need to isolate for VI. So let's rewrite A equals VF minus VI over T. We're going to multiply both sides by T. And we're left with AT equals VF minus VI. We're going to bring VI to the left side of the equation. So we're going to add VI to both sides of the equation. That gets rid of it from the right-hand side. So we're going to be left with AT plus VI equals VF. And then we're going to subtract AT from both sides of the equation. Now we're going to be left with VI equals VF minus AT. And that's our answer. Check your understanding. A motorcyclist traveling at 23 meters per second north so VI equals 23 meters per second north. Applies the brakes, producing an average acceleration of 7.2 meters per second squared south. What is the motorcyclist's velocity, so VF, after 2.5 seconds? So now we have to pick a positive direction. It doesn't matter what that positive direction is. Let's just say that north is positive. So now this number becomes 23 meters per second this number becomes negative 7.2 meters per second squared. We're going to use the equation A equals VF minus VI over T, and we need to solve for VF. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by T, be left with AT equals VF minus VI, because those T's cancel out. We're then going to add VI to the right and left side of the equation, and then we're going to be left with AT plus VI equals VF. And then we're going to plug our numbers in. We have A at negative 7.2. We have T at 2.5 plus VI of 23. When we put those into our calculator, we get positive 5 meters per second. We said north was positive. We say therefore VF equals 5.0, because we need two sig digs, meters per second north. Check your understanding. So here's six questions to check to see if you understand what's going on. So I want you to pause the video, answer questions one to six, and then we'll take them up one by one. Number one, is it possible to have an acceleration when the velocity is zero? If no, explain. Well, acceleration is velocity final minus velocity initial. 
over time. If our velocity is zero, as in we're not moving at all, then this side just becomes zero. Right? That's just going to be zero, and that's going to make the acceleration zero, and therefore the answer is no. You can't have an acceleration when the velocity is zero. If we're not moving, we can't be accelerating. Number two, is it possible to have an eastward velocity with a westward acceleration? If no, explain why not. If yes, give an example. So is it possible to have an eastward velocity with a westward acceleration? Well, of course it is. If we're traveling eastward at 23 meters per second, but we're slowing down, so we apply the brakes. So let's just say that two seconds later, we're now moving eastward at 20 meters per second. Well, now we're slowing down, so that means our acceleration is going to be that way. So if these directions were east, our acceleration would be west because we're slowing down. So is it possible to have an eastward velocity with a westward acceleration? Yes. You can say the acceleration will be in the opposite direction to motion when the object is slowing down. Number three, a flock of robins is migrating southwards. Describe the flock's motion at instance when its acceleration is positive, B negative, and C zero. Take the southward direction as positive. So we're going to describe its acceleration when it's positive. Well, when it's positive, we're going to be increasing velocity in the southward direction, B. When it's negative, we're going to be decreasing velocity in the southward direction when our acceleration is negative. In this case, we're going to be slowing down. And C, when it's zero, well, when acceleration is zero, when A equals zero, velocity is constant. If the velocity isn't changing, then the acceleration is zero. Number four, a track runner starting from rest, so VI is zero, reaches a velocity of 9.3 meters per second forward. Oops, 9.3 meters per second forward in 3.9 seconds. Determine the runner's average acceleration. So acceleration is the question. We're going to say that that is forward, and we're going to call that positive. A equals VF minus VI over T. VF is 9.3, VI is 0, and time is 3.9. And that's going to give us an acceleration of 2.38 positive. We need two sig digs in our answer, and positive was forward. So our final answer is 2.4 meters per second squared forward. Five, the Renault de Space is a production car that can go from rest to 26.7 meters per second with an incredibly large acceleration of 9.52. A, how long does the space take to achieve its speed of 26.7 meters per second? Well, VI is zero. VF is 26.7 meters per second forward. Time is question. And acceleration is 9.52 meters per second squared forward. Our equation, A equals VF minus VI over T, needs to be rearranged. So let's multiply both sides of the equation by T. We're going to get AT equals VF minus VI. We're going to divide both sides of the equation by A. I'm going to be left with T equals VF minus VI over A. When we plug our numbers in, our VF is 26.7, our VI is 0, and our acceleration is 9.52. And that gives us a number of 2.8 seconds. We need three sig digs, so it's actually 2.80 seconds. So that's our time. B, what is the speed in kilometers per hour? Well, if the initial speed is 26.7, meters per second, and we need our answer in kilometers per hour. We need to multiply by 3,600 seconds divided by one hour times 1,000 meters per one kilometer. So that gets rid of the meters on the bottom, the seconds on the top, and we just multiply it through. So we say 26.7 times 3,600 divided by 1,000 equals 96.1 
kilometers per hour. And that's our final answer. Six, an arrow strikes a target in an archery tournament. The arrow undergoes an average acceleration of 1.37 times 10 to the 3 meter second squared west in 3.12 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds, then stops. Determine the velocity of the arrow when it hits the target. So what is our final velocity? Well, it's stopping, right? The arrow is stopping. So the VF is zero. The VI is the speed the arrow had when it came in, which we don't know. The acceleration, we're told, is 1.37 times 10 to the 3 meters per second squared. And we'll say backwards. And the time, we're told, is 3.12 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds. So now what we're going to do, we're going to say backwards. I wrote backwards on here. Let's call that west. That's what we're given in the question. So we'll say west. So our initial velocity is, of course, going to be east. So let's just say that east is positive. We could have made west positive if we wanted to. Let's make east positive. So let's rewrite our equation. A equals VF minus VI over t. In this question, we're looking for vi. So we're going to do a little rearranging. Multiply both sides by t. We get at equals vf minus vi. We're going to add vi to both sides of the equation. We're going to be left with vi plus at equals vf. We're going to subtract at from both sides of the equation. And we're left with vi equals VF minus AT. And now we can plug some numbers in. VI equals VF, which is zero, minus, now we said east was positive, so now our acceleration is negative. So minus negative 1.37 times 10 to the 3, times, a little one room here, 3.12 times 10 to the negative 2. And when you put that in your calculator, you get 42 0.74 meters per second. Now, since it's a positive number, we know that the answer is east. We need three sig in our answer, so let's just rewrite it. So we say, therefore, vi equals 42.7 meters per second east. Non-uniform acceleration. For non-uniform acceleration motion, the velocity time graph for the motion is not a straight line, and the slope changes. In this case, the slope of the graph at a particular instant represents an instantaneous acceleration. So we can't find the acceleration of the system because it's changing, right? It's not a constant acceleration. But we can find the acceleration at two different times, or in fact, as many times as we want. We just draw these tangents at those times. So we can find the acceleration at time one, for instance. So at time one, we draw a tangent at time one. And then at this point, we can pick two points along the tangent. So let's pick that point, and we'll pick that point. So we can find the slope is going to be rise, so it's going to be 10 minus 4 over the run, which is going to be 1.5 minus 0 0.5, and that's going to give us 6 divided by 1, which is going to equal to 6, and in this case, the rise is in meters per second, and the run is in seconds, so meters per second squared. We could find the acceleration in the second tangent. We just pick two points along the second tangent. We can call it right there and right there. Let's do it in this color here. Let's do green. So in this case, M is going to be the rise. So it's going to be, it's, it's, it doesn't go quite to the lines. Let's just call it 13.5 minus 12. And the run is going to be 4 minus 3. So it's going to be 1.5 over 1, which is equal to 1.5 meters per second squared. So you can see the acceleration is decreasing between these two times. Now the velocity is still going up because we're still getting positive acceleration, but our velocity isn't as isn't increasing as quickly as it was before. Check your understanding. This chart summarizes observations of a turtle experiencing constant acceleration over several two second intervals. Draw a velocity time graph for this motion. B, use the information on your velocity time graph to draw the corresponding acceleration time graph. So I want you to pause the video and answer questions A and B, and then we'll take it up. Okay, so A, once you've plotted your data, and you see that our velocity time graph looks like this top one, you'll see that your velocity time graph looks like this, where we get an increase in velocity between times 0 and 4, and then our velocity decreases between times 4 and 10. 
And this brings us to our acceleration time graph, which we get from looking at the data from the VT graph. You can see we have positive acceleration between times zero and four, which you'd expect since our velocity here is going up. And then since our velocity is going down between times four and 10, we're getting negative acceleration at this point right here.